ACU picked up a huge win on Saturday against the University of Incarnate Word. I'm Hannah Null. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll dive into the highlights of that big homecoming victory and look ahead to tonight's game against the defending Southland Conference champs. It's the Ken Collins Show right now. Welcome to week nine of the Ken Column Show presented by Lawrence Hall. I'm Grant Boone alongside ACU junior journalism major Hannah Null and the head football coach at ACU Ken Columns. The Wildcats celebrated homecoming weekend a week ago with a resounding 52 to 27 victory over the University of the Incarnate Word. Coach, in front of the biggest crowd of the season, you played, I guess it would have to be your best football of the season. I've got to believe that that was a festive locker room afterwards. Well, there's no question. It was, from start to finish, it was the best uh, game that we played all year. And we've talked about, I've talked about on this show week after week, let's just put together four quarters that we've seen glimpses of it. We can be really good, guys. But we, we did it uh, on, on Saturday against Incarnate Word and in front of a great crowd. And homecoming crowds around here are awesome. I mean, people come from all over the place and of course, it was, it was awesome in, in the locker room just to celebrate with those guys. They, they, they deserve it, uh, coaches and players alike. But I'm super proud of our players, and uh, it was a good time. Well, Coach, you're not supposed to look back in sports, but with that big win, how are you planning on bringing that momentum over to this coming game? Well, to me, the way I handle this team every single week is we always take a look back. Uh, we, always, we refer to it as our rearview mirror, and you've you got to take a look back because that's where you've been. And those are the, sometimes those are rough roads you've been on. But then there's a reason there's a reason why the rearview mirror is smaller than the than the windshield. You take a you take a look back, but then you look forward. Uh, so, but our guys are walking around with confidence. I mean, the, the uh, confidence of just not just winning a game, but playing well. There's there, when you play a game well, it does something to you, and it gives you even more weight uh, throughout your preparation for the next week. Well, let's hope that that momentum will carry over tonight down in Lake Charles, Louisiana. We'll preview that game against McNeese a little bit later on in the show. But when we come back, the highlights from a happy homecoming game. Stay with us. It's the Ken Collum Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Each week on the Ken Collum Show, we look back at great moments in the history of Shotwell Stadium as the Wildcats are finishing up their 58th and final season there. This week's final shot takes us back to 1970 when superstar quarterback Jim Lindsay, having just become college football's all-time passing leader, threw for a then Southland Conference record 414 yards as the number eight Wildcats fell 28-23 to Arkansas State, which was ranked number one in the nation. Well, last Saturday at Shotwell, ACU scored early and often and rolled to a 52-27 homecoming victory over Incarnate Word. With the highlights, here's Jonathan Rates. In the 58th and final homecoming game at Shotwell Stadium, the Wildcats took on the University of Incarnate Word, still in search of its first win of the season. En route to a 500-yard performance, the ACU offense struck first as junior DeAndre Brown found the end zone from 11 yards out. After picking up a fumble at the ACU 30, UIW answered with a touchdown of their own from Trent Britton to tie the game at seven apiece. But the Wildcats responded with 31 straight points beginning with a five-yard touchdown, which made it 14 to seven. ACU added to its lead early in the second quarter when senior Adrian Duncan tiptoed the sideline to push the lead to 14 at 21 to seven. This would be the first of two touchdown receptions on the day for Duncan. Freshman Tracy James found the end zone from nine yards out on the next drive to give all three of ACU's running backs a first half touchdown. The defense played its best half all season in the first half, allowing just 86 total yards and forcing two fumbles, including this strip by junior Sam Denmark and recovery by junior Royce Moore. The offense would capitalize on the UIW turnover as shortly after Dallas Seeley connected with Troy Grant for the second time on the day from 32 yards out, giving ACU a 35-7 lead. Junior Nick Grau would cap the 31-0 scoring run with a 44-yard field goal, which tied his career high. In the second half, the Cardinals showed signs of life early as they traveled 75 yards in 16 plays to cut the lead to 38-14 with 10-15 to play in the third quarter. 
Seeley answered on the next drive when he found DJ Fuller for 25 yards and a touchdown to put the lead back to 31 at 45 to 14. Fuller led the team with eight catches for 98 yards and that touchdown. After neither team could score off the other's turnovers, UIW again cut the lead to 24 at 45 to 21 on Broderick Reeves' first score of the day from three yards out. But Duncan would all but seal the victory when he found the end zone for the second time on the day with a 41-yard screen pass scamper to give ACU a commanding 52 to 21 lead with just 13-01 remaining in the final quarter of play. The touchdown would also give Seeley his 20th total touchdown on the season. UIW scored one final time on its ensuing drive with a 16-yard pass from Taylor Laird to Jamari Gilbert, which brought the score to its eventual final at 52-27. Okay, thanks, Jonathan. Final score, 52-27. ACU knocks off the University of the Incarnate Word. Coach, you told us a couple of weeks ago that you make the decision about what to do with the ball when you win the toss, usually on game day. You won the toss again. You elected to take the ball. Why? Well, because I wanted to see Dallas and his offense play in the first quarter. I, and I had a good feeling going in that we could protect Dallas a little bit. And anytime you can do that, uh, knowing that he had a solid week of preparation, knowing that he's getting better and he's building and building, I think, uh, you know, hey, you give him the ball and see what happens. And, uh, you know, he took it and, and let us down for a score. So. Uh, we were fired up about that, and uh, it, that was against the win. And there was a, there was a significant it win. It was a good twenty and, mile uh, and and we ended up getting the getting the win uh, in the second quarter also. Oh, seventy five yard drives. You love those because it means that you're churning out big, you know, nice chunk plays, yep. moving the chains. Big third and ten conversion. It, it's easy to look at Dallas rolling out, finding Troy Grant. Maybe. That something you don't notice unless you look at the film is DeAndre Brown picked up a blitz on that play, and how nice for him to pay that drive off with an 11-yard touchdown. Sure, and what you what you saw Saturday afternoon was everybody doing their job at a high level and at a consistent level, uh, because being a running back isn't just like DeAndre Brown doesn't just run the ball. You've got to protect, and sometimes those blitzers they're 240-pound linebackers bearing down on the quarterback, and you've got to step in and stone them up. And if you don't guess what, you're going to kick a field goal there instead of, instead of continuing to drive and score a touchdown. So from top to bottom, I'm just proud of our guys, and they, they made those plays. When we talk about winning one-on-ones, that's what I'm talking about. De DeAndre Brown won that one-on-one, -on -one. and uh, it's not as uh, you, people don't talk about that, but that happens. And all of those guys up front, you've got to win your one-on-ones, and, and by and large, they did. Another one-on-one -on -one you won was for your second touchdown when Dallas hit Troy Grant on, on a, a third down play inside the tight red zone, maybe the five-yard line. He goes up for number five, and Troy 6'4". You bring in two transfer receivers who are instant impact guys. DJ Fuller, he's more of your speed guy, and Troy Grant can flat out, flat out go and get it, can he? Yes, he can, and that was beautiful. Dallas put that ball high and away from the corner where nobody was going to be able to get that. And all of a sudden, you think it's going over his head, all of a sudden you see those long arms go up and he just snatched it out of the air. And uh, that, was, that was really good to see. I thought Troy competed very, very hard. He was very clean with a lot of his routes. He's caught some short routes, turned them into bigger routes. And then, uh, you know, right before half, he, he catches the one uh, and, and runs in uncontested. And that's just cool to see. Cause those guys have worked so hard, mm. and finally it's starting to work like it's supposed to. That was Troy's second two-touchdown reception game of the season. Had one against Stephen F. as yes. well. Coach, 38-7 to seven at halftime. And I love the final two or three minutes. You, I thought, were, were masterful at using the timeouts. You took what they gave you. They tried to move the ball and had a couple sure. of incompletions. Yep. The combination of their stopping the clock with the incompletions and your mixing and matching with the timeouts, you milked a couple of extra drives out of that. Sure. First I, thought, I thought we would get one extra drive, but they did some things with incompletions to help us out a little bit, and we ended up getting uh, two drives on it. So, uh, and, but I, was, I, I can do all that, but those guys have still got to go out and make plays, right. and they did, and, that, and that's, that's what fires you up. 38-7, you love at halftime. 52 points is awesome. But, Coach, this is a Sam Houston, uh, this is a, an Incarnate Word team that played Sam Houston State in its last game, the number one team in the nation, Sam Houston State. They had 48 points and 500 yards of offense against the number one team in the nation. You held them to less than 300 yards. How did your defense do it? Well, we didn't give up big throws. Uh, they, I think they caught one long pass on us, and... Uh, 
you know, you look at them. And that was late. Yeah, their game against Sam Houston, that's what kept them in the game. Uh, Sam Houston was giving up double moves for big, long touchdown passes. And, and uh, you know, Coach Doolin had, had his guys, they, they had them ready for that. And, and we knew they were going to throw the ball down the field. And uh, they ended up completing one there toward the end of the game. We mentioned Jim Lindsay at the beginning of this segment in our final shot. He was ASU's first great downfield passer. He was college football's all-time passing leader. Loved to see Dallas Seeley wearing number one. Uh, Lindsey was 10, but Dallas Seeley number one. The Southland Conference Player of the Week, Offensive Player of the Week. Five touchdowns, a career high, 346 yards. It was a great day. Big crowd, big win. 52-27, the Wildcats got it done over Incarnate Word. We will preview tonight's game against McNeese a little bit later on. But first, take a look at scores from last week in the Southland Conference. Stay with us here on the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. We're back with more of the Ken Collins Show. While football heads to Lake Charles, Louisiana, the soccer team finishes up their season in San Antonio against the University of Incarnate Word. Here's Max Preston with a look at more ACU sports. Thanks, Hannah. The volleyball team was in action last Tuesday against Lamar and lost with a set score of 3 to nothing. Sophomore J.C. Smith posted 10 kills, while sophomore Kendall Bossy put up 29 assists and freshman Amanda Chapa had 15 digs. The women were scheduled to next play Northwestern State on Thursday. Soccer was on the road twice this weekend playing Stephen F. Austin, losing 3-2, and Sam Houston winning 2-0. Against SFA, senior Natalie Throneberry and freshman Shea Johnson scored goals to keep the score tied at 2 until the 82nd minute of the second half when SFA scored the final goal to win. In the Sam Houston game, Johnson and senior Ali Gurner scored the only goals of the game and senior goalkeeper Sidney Newton earned her sixth shutout of the season. The women were scheduled to close out the 2016 season this Friday against Incarnate Word. The men and women both had their ITA regionals this weekend as the women went to Waco to participate while the men went to Fort Worth. Standouts for the men included the Sheehy brothers as they were able to advance to the semifinals of the consolation bracket in doubles. Josh Sheehy also got an impressive singles victory against Henrik Munch of Rice University, while Cole Lawson won against the Texas competitor William Jew. Sophomore Autumn Crossno was a standout for the women as she earned two victories in the consolation play against Southland Conference competitors. This concluded both the men and women's fall season. ACU honored two football legends on Saturday during homecoming festivities when it hosted the ACU Football Legends Luncheon. The luncheon honored running back Wilbert Montgomery and place kicker Ova Johansson. Both of these legends had memorable games on homecoming October 16, 1976 in the 17-0 win over East Texas State. Johansson set a standing world record for the longest field goal in a game at any level of football with a 69-yard field goal at the end of the first quarter. Later in the game, Montgomery scored on a one-yard run to give the Wildcats a 17-0 lead. That touchdown made Montgomery the all-time touchdown king in college football history with 67. The event was meant to honor Montgomery and Johansson, but also had the surprise of announcing that they will be constructing an outdoor structure at the new football stadium in honor of Wally Bullington. Well, that does it for this week's sportscast. For JMC Network Sports, I'm Max Preston. Thanks, Max. The ACU Sports Hall of Fame celebrated its 30th anniversary by inducting seven new members during homecoming weekend at the Hunter Welcome Center. The Hall of Fame class of 2016 includes ACU football's all-time leader in tackles, Ryan Boozer, and a two-time conference MVP in volleyball, Amanda Slate Farrell, who both reflected on their experiences at ACU. The best moments were the times on the bus, the singing on the bus, uh, the devotionals, the time with the teammates. Um, getting to spin together, the gritty workouts we did together, the 7 a.m. wake up call to go run 300s, 200s on the track during two days. Um, crazy as it sounds, those are the times that I miss. I think really the thing I miss probably the most and remember the most is, is being around the team and, and having, you know, 65, so I don't even know how I mean, I have no idea. I probably wasn't the nicest to Mark and some others, but, um, you know, just having a, a common goal and, and suffering through things, and I hated practice. I probably would have been better if I liked practice, but I hated it. Um, 
But yeah, that, that's probably what I remember the most, is just, just little moments of sitting on the bus and, and some things that we all had fun with, and, and it, it's fun to remember those times. The inductees also included all-region basketball star Peter Kagania, the offensive MVP on ACU's all-century baseball team, Brad Massey, the Wildcats' first great softball player, pitcher Shelly Owen, and an All-America tennis player and ACU's first softball head coach, Carol Tabor, who shared the story of how she ended up at ACU. Our love affair with ACU, all these tables here, my friend will agree, it started in 1946 when the most beautiful woman in the world, Jean Caskey, my mother, came to ACU. Two years later, my handsome dad, Navy guy, comes here, and they talked about nausea 89 and Swanee and acapella and all those fun 1940s, 50s things. And then they had five children, and I'm the youngest. And I was going to play somewhere else. I wasn't coming to ACU, and then Coach McCoy called me, and just, it's the greatest phone call I ever received. Ron Willingham received the Lifetime Achievement Award for his philanthropy and his leadership training with Coach Wally Bullington's football teams in the 1960s and 70s. And former baseball star Dr. Joel Wells, who's now an orthopedic surgeon at Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, was given the Jim Womack Award for his performance on the field and in the classroom. The inductees were also honored on Saturday during the homecoming football game. When we come back, we'll find out how Coach Combs plans to get past the Cowboys' defense. Stay with us right here on The Ken Column Show. Welcome back to the Ken Collum Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Take a look at this week's schedule in the Southland Conference. Central Arkansas is on the road in Hammond, Louisiana to take on Southeastern Louisiana. They can join Sam Houston State atop the conference standings at 6-0 with a victory in that game. Sam Houston State steps out of conference to host Texas Southern. Well, tonight down on the bayou in Lake Charles, Louisiana, ACU takes on the defending Southland Conference champion McNeese Cowboys. The Wildcats, coming off that big win last week against Incarnate Word, take on a McNeese team at 4-4 four four overall, 3-3 three three in the conference, a team that's had its ups and downs on and off the field. Coach, you've had two very competitive games against McNeese down there a couple of years ago, and then right here, 15-13, they were... A uh, top five team in the nation and undefeated, and you lost 15 13 here. Go back to that game two years ago down there. What do you remember about the game day environment in Lake Charles? Well, the first thing you, when you're driving up in your bus, <laughs> I mean, there are acres and acres of tailgaters. I mean, it, it is a true college football uh, atmosphere. Uh, what a great place to play the game. Uh, great stadium, and it, it is a, it, it's homecoming down there. So they'll be, they'll be blue and gold from wall to wall, they'll be fussing at us. And uh, it, it is a, it's a pretty rowdy atmosphere, and so I mean, it's Saturday night in South Louisiana. McNeese has a strong and a quick defensive line, but they also have good defensive backs like Damian Morgan, who's had over 44 tackles on the season. So how, what are your plans for your offense to break through that thick defense? Well, I think we have to do what we did last week is focus on getting the ball to our guys, to our, to our playmakers, and then they've got to make the plays. The big thing you saw last week against Incarnate Word was when we had a chance, when our guys had a chance to win a one-on-one, -on -one, for the by and, for the most part, they did. They, yeah, they won true. the one-on-one. -on -one. They just made the plays. And I think if we focus on just our guys making plays, just make the routine plays, uh, you know, the defense is going to make plays on their own. They're good. They're good every single year. A, a McNeese defense is is Would one you? of the nemesis of anybody in the conference. So. Uh, it, it, we'll go down there and play well, but we've got to do our part instead of focusing so much on what they do. You know, McNeese's offense the last couple of years has really begun and ended with Daniel Sams, the transfer from Kansas State. Played there the last couple of years at McNeese after transferring. He's not there this year. How different is their offense without Daniel Sams? Well, they, they're more, uh, their quarterback now is more of a, of a distributor, kind of like ours. They look similar to us on offense. They get a lot of people involved. they got capable running backs. Uh, they've got receivers that can make plays down the field, and, and they use a lot of midsize guys like we do, tight end, fullback type guys. So uh, it, it is a, uh, it's not so much of a quarterback-dominated uh, offense. He does a really good job of getting the ball around. They'll complete balls to a bunch of different people. So D.J. Fuller put a big role in the passing game at the beginning of the season. 
He got a little injury, kind of slowed him down a little bit. But in the past two games, he's had 16 catches and over 250 yards. So he's obviously doing better. How does it feel to have him back in the offense? It feels great. And I would love for him to have 16 catches and 250 <laughs> in the game tonight. tonight yeah. Yes. But what, 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 what you're getting, we, had, we, had, we bumped our head a little bit with a couple of injuries with Dallas, missed a couple of games, DJ. Uh, yeah, and, right. Yes. And, and we, we hadn't had all of, our, all of our main guys together, and we're starting to get them back. And there's a reason why. We had a really good game last week. We're getting all our guys back. Well, Louisiana Saturday night. It, yes. it should be a lot of fun down there. It will be. I mean, it, the opportunity to go down and play a great team. You have a chance to, to beat the defending conference champs for a second straight year. That's right. So that's a great opportunity. And it should be a lot of fun. Always a high-energy environment in Lake Charles. ACU and McNeese kick off at 6 p.m. We'll have the pregame show at 5.30 on the ACU Sports Network. And the game will be televised on the American Sports Network. Former Wildcat All-America, John Layfield, will serve as the analyst for that broadcast. Check local listings for the station in your area. For Coach and for Hannah, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you next week.